Welcome to the Metal Detecting Podcast, brought to you by XP Metal Detectors. We're digging the plugs and pinpointing the topics you want to hear. Now, here's your hosts, Dave Kimball and Grant Hansen. This show is brought to you by XP Metal Detectors. XP Metal Detectors is a high-end, innovative metal detector company with great machines and great pinpointers. For more information, go to xpmetaldetectors.com. For a dealer near you, try a Google search or go to xpdeus-usa.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Detecting Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Kimball, coming to you from central Oklahoma, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Grant Hansen, coming to you from New Jersey. How you doing, Grant? It's been a long time since I've heard from you. It's been a long time. Happy New Year. I know it's only the 24th, but uh, I can still say Happy New Year. How's it going? Yes, Happy New Year to you, and Merry Christmas. I haven't heard from you since. <laughs> yeah. Did you, guys, did you and your family do anything good over the holidays? Oh, we did all right. We did... I just took a little breather, you know, but it was fun. Yeah, same here. Ate a lot of food, uh, made sure my daughter was entertained and, uh, you know, had a nice week off from work. So um, it was good, good downtime. Yeah. Of course, we did stay in touch a little bit, but we just have not been on the show. And I thank everybody for coming back and listening to us. We've taken a little bit off and we took some breathers, relaxed through the holiday weekends. And then we had a little bit of technical difficulty coming back. So we're a little bit behind, but we are back and hopefully we will stay back. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like David said, uh, thanks so much for coming back, joining us and listening, whether you're on Spreaker or hearing us up on YouTube. We really appreciate you tuning in. Yes, and uh, for a big thank you for listening to us, uh, we will be offering a giveaway on this podcast. Yes, we will, and we will have details about that. So make sure you keep your ears close to the speakers because we have a great giveaway tonight all right you know i was looking around on facebook not too long ago and somebody posted on our uh facebook group page about this the antidepressant microbes in soil did you read about that i did and you know it really sung to me that article because my whole life i've just always said i love the dirt i like being in the dirt it makes me feel good i love the smell of it so knowing that there's science behind it um i could really relate to it yeah see it it says that antidepressants microbes in soil cause cytokine levels to rise which results in the production of higher levels of serotonin and uh, it kind of talks about how a lot of gardeners get this bacteria by inhaling it or, or through their skin and bloodstream maybe through a scratch or something or another but that's supposed to really it increases serotonin and makes puts people in a good mood and and really helps for anti like an antidepressant yeah it makes you think too of people who take like mud baths right they're they've got their whole body in there or even like a mud mask so th- there might be something to that that's to right <laughs> yeah i didn't even think yourself. about that yeah so there you go i mean <laughs> pro- proof yeah. that pudding <laughs> right you know on top of that, you can also benefit by being outdoors altogether. I mean, the sunlight is also increase uh, serotonin in your body and makes you really happy and in a good mood and, and is good for you, including the vitamin D and everything else. Yeah, definitely. You know, and I just feel different. You know, I feel differently mentally if I'm not outside, if I haven't had a chance to be in the sun um, and you, like you said, the vitamin D, I think there's a lot of people who have deficiencies now and they actually have to take a supplement because they're just not outside enough. Yes, you're right. I mean, put your work office outside a little bit, you know, go outside and enjoy yourself. Go metal detecting. That's the best. That's the best cure for everything. Right. You know, even a bad day, you're probably still happy being outside metal detecting, swinging on a nice property. Um, so, you know, if anyone gives you a uh, problems or gets on your case for spending too much time out in the field tell them hey i'm doing this for my health right and we heard a few people talk about the benefits of metal detecting helping ptsd and stuff like that and you know that could be why you know not to mention your alone time and and you know everybody needs a little bit of alone time and, and quiet and peace yeah for me it's the quiet and peace just um getting out there mentally escaping um from the stresses of family life and work and like you said with the ptsd 
PTSD. I've heard it's been really, really helpful uh, for, for people suffering that. So um, spread the word about that because that could be um, really beneficial, especially to um, the fine people who serve our country. That's right. So we got a few new YouTube shows on YouTube, so go check them out. Grant, what are all they about? Yeah, so one that just came out this week is um, it's actually featuring me and Gary Blackwell. We're having a conversation about reactivity and how to set it right for different conditions and what to keep in mind with other settings if you're messing around with reactivity. Um, so far, the response has been pretty positive. I think people enjoy it. So um, always good to know all the different settings on your machine. And, and this one, of course, is Deus specific. So if you use a Deus, check it out. Yes. All right. Yeah. And Gary has another video um, that he published on his channel um, on all of his different custom programs. And you got like the Evo program, the Ultimate, um, and the Sonar, and kind of talking about what the differences are between those three programs. Um, I know those programs are very popular. So, um, yeah, check those out as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I know since the last we talked, I know you posted a video too about copper, finding more copper coins, right? Oh, yeah. It's been that long, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I ended. 2019 really really strong um i went out um and found five coppers in my last outing four of them were new jersey copper coins so i was thrilled with that uh, yeah <laughs> That is, that is very, very cool. So you got a collection going now, don't you? I, I do. And luckily for Christmas, I got a bunch of display cases. So, um, you know, you, you know, what do you get for somebody who's got everything, right? Um, so my my family got me some display cases because those will always come in handy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. That's how you give somebody who has everything. Way to display everything. Right, right. Yeah, so like we mentioned before, we got, the, uh, we got a giveaway coming up. So stay tuned to hear about that. Awesome. Also, Sonia has a contest on Facebook. Yeah, Sonia's running a great contest with um, our very good friends over at XP Metal Detectors Americas. You could win $100 towards some, some awesome XP accessories. So go to our Facebook page, check the new contest post for all the details on how to enter, and uh, you might win a great prize. All right, yeah, that's excellent. $100 gift certificate. I mean, that is great. Yep. All right, so today we got two great guests. We got Maddie Tomaney, and we also also have Steve Blankenship. So when we get back, let's talk to Maddie. Looking forward to it. Check us out online at xpdais-usa.com. If you are looking for more information about XP products such as dealers or updates, then check out metaldetectorsamericas.com. Hello, this is Daniel from XP Metal Detectors Americas, and I just wanted to let you know about the XP Metal Detectors Americas.com website, which is full of information on the AUS Metal Detector and the ORX Metal Detector. Both are wireless and do all aspects of metal detecting, which is gold prospecting, coins, jewelry, and relics. Tonight's guest is a young and talented detectorist and a great ambassador for our hobby. He is the host of Digging Adventures, the live show with Maddie. Let's give a warm welcome to Maddie Tomaney. Welcome to the show, Maddie. Hello. Hey, Maddie. Thanks so much for joining us. It's great to have yet another fellow New Jersey native on our program. Um, so love talking to people from New Jersey. Um, and, you know, I know it's toward the end of January, but I want to say Happy New Year and find out, did you do anything fun for New Year's? Um, did I do anything fun for the year? Let's see. I went out to England to detect the all, and that was pretty fun. I also went up to New York, pound the ground. Went to the DSJ, Diggin' South Jersey, quite a bit this year. I also got quite a, well, last year, I got quite a few fines of the, for the year. I think I did pretty well, and um, overall, it was a good year. So did you get anything cool metal detecting related for Christmas? For Christmas, um, let's see. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Dave and I were just talking about what do you get for somebody who's got everything, right? So, uh, you, you know, get them, get them a display case, the display everything they have. Right. I mean, I mean, like we did give my mom a vanquish, but there you go. So she's she going to come start detecting with you guys. She has been detecting before, but uh -huh. just like my sister, she doesn't really detect a lot. Mm -hmm. Like once a year. 
That's like, cool. It's like my wife. I've been trying to get her out like crazy, and she sounds interested, and she gets out, and all she wants to do is take pictures and wander off and stare at butterflies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We try to get I my t- sister out because she wants to make her um, metal detecting um, thing. She wants to be part of the community. It's like, you can't be part of the community if you don't go out detecting. <laughs> <laughs> that's very very true yeah yeah so um you know i think it takes just that one really good find to catch the fever and then maybe she'll start getting out over and over again and it'll be nice with your sister yeah we're gonna talk our fair share of metal detecting tonight uh but first um we'd like to get to know you a little bit more so in your own words can you please tell us a little bit about yourself a little bit about myself um let's see I'm 14 years old, and I own my own little show, which I have people on every week. I do interviews sort of like this, but they're live, you know. Um, I'm, I would consider myself decent when it comes to metal detecting. Not the best, not the worst. I've been detecting for maybe like, I don't know, seven, eight years now. I'm funny sometimes. <laughs> Whenever I try to make a joke, it's either... It was a terrible joke, or it's a pretty good joke. <laughs> That's the best comedians, yeah. isn't it? Right. <laughs> I don't know if there's much more to say about myself. <laughs> All right. Well, so what are some of your interests outside of metal detecting, like other hobbies or activities at school? Uh, other hobbies. I like to do historical research. I like to um, do, what's it called, um, magnet fishing, shark tooth hunting, I also, I want to like you know go hunting if my dad would ever ever bring me out. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, I um. I know in New Jersey we've got some good spots for uh, shark teeth. I've never actually done yeah. it myself, but I know some people are pretty successful with that. Yes, yeah, so I went out once, and on my first time ever, I found a 75 million year old fossilized lobster. Oh wow! Really. Holy moly. That's you ever really, heard of really who, cool. You ever heard of um, who Drupal Holic is? He was yes. out there with us. And when he saw I pulled that out, he was like heavy breathing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so when you were looking for it, were you using like a sifter and shoveling uh, in a creek or something? How did you yeah, find that? Yeah, we were right in a stream near a school. I don't know where it was because I'm terrible at like remembering where we go. Mm. <laughs> But we had like a sifter and a shovel. We just went out there. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got to give that a shot. Um, there's a lot of opportunities that I'm just, uh, sometimes I just want to get in the field and swing, <laughs> you know, but I got to do a little bit more exploring. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, earlier about like historical research. Um, do you enjoy any subjects in school, like history or anything else that you're into? Social studies, I really enjoy, especially when you're like the best kid in class. And whenever you do pairs and you get picked, the one kid you get picked with, they're like, yes, I got Maddie. (laughs) (laughs) So even at your young age, you mentioned you've been detecting for quite a while. So what got you started? It was mainly my dad. He would bring me out detecting. Um, I wouldn't metal detect with him. I just sort of stand there with the shovel and just watch him and, you know, protect him in case anybody comes behind with a shovel and bangs him over the head. (laughs) But like I, the one day he was just digging the hole. I picked up his, um, CTX and I looked at the numbers. I was like, I have no idea what this means. And I was like, Hmm, maybe I should find out. Mm -hmm. So I started metal detecting. My dad gave me one of his, um, old machines from, it was like a white coin pro. Nice. So it must be a great uh, experience to share the hobby and everything else that comes with it with your dad. And, you know, sometimes to your sister and your mom, um, I know a lot of us wish we had that same father son bond that you guys have. What does it mean to you? It means a lot to me because there's, I know there's a lot of people out there that they detected, they started detecting on their own. But when it comes to me, I got to start detecting with someone that I know and I love my father. And to be honest, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have started detecting in the first place. 
Yeah, yeah it's great. I'm, I'm hoping my daughter will someday uh, show an interest. She's seven years old now, and she wants to go in the backyard with me. But after five minutes, you know, she's on to something else. So hopefully yeah. if it's not metal detecting, we'll find something together that we enjoy doing. Yeah. She's around She's around the age when I started metal detecting. So mm-hmm. Right, right. You could be, uh, you're the role model for her. I'll have to use you as an example. Yeah. Yeah. My granddaughter loves to go detecting with me sometimes at the parks and the, in the park playgrounds, but she, she's just looking for toys. So she wants me to find her toys to play with. <laughs> yeah. I actually got my nephew a metal detector for Christmas and he's eight. So, um, of course right now with it being winter, it's hard to get out, but I'm going to take him out because he's just got the fever for finding treasure. And the nice thing too, at that age, I can and just go and kind of see his front yard with a bunch of pennies and nickels and uh you know he'll he'll have a ball finding that stuff oh huh, that's nice i remember i did something sort of like that my cousins came out here from california and we brought him out detecting on the beach hmm. and one of their um one of the cousins who was like younger than me, it was going to be their birthday. So I sort of did that weird um, like night thing when they bend on one knee and hand them the sword. Except that, <laughs> but except I handed him the um, the go find um, 60. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Unite them with your <laughs> yeah. shovel. Right. <laughs> so being from New Jersey like Grant, you have a lot of historical old property like fields and old homes, woods, beaches and parks, just about everything. What type of detecting do you prefer? Um. I prefer like if you want to be if you're talking about like splitting like places in half like land and water I prefer land because that's where the history is for the most part do you like but if you're talking about like specifics like beach and stuff I would prefer fields old farm fields because on places like that that's where you find the most stuff because you know you have the word old in there right <laughs> yeah I like old home sites um i love old fields too but i i think what i like about the home sites is the properties are smaller and i feel like i can leave there knowing i searched every single inch of that property whereas a field i'm like am i in the right spot do i need to go over there do i need to go over there but they, they both have their their very good qualities for me yeah so um you mentioned uh Pound the ground earlier, and um, I actually got the the opportunity to meet you and your dad out there. Um, I thought it was a great event. Did you have a good time? Yeah, I had a good time. I mean, my best find out there was an old crusty, dusty wrench. <laughs> yeah, depending on what spot you were in, um, you were either finding some colonial coins, Revolutionary War buttons, and things like that. But um, you know, I, I think uh, Pete, especially with the giving up his um, permission for everybody. Um, it was great land. It just had to be in the right spot. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if you saw or heard of it, but I really rolled in to pound the ground on that first day. Oh, d- did you, uh, did you, did you fall? If you go and you look at Anaconda Treasures YouTube channel on their pound the ground video, you can see that at one point, I'm rolling down the hill. <laughs> I saw that on a Facebook post. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you do your, like, your research. I had <laughs> tripped over myself and rolled all the way down the hill. <laughs> well, you didn't get hurt, did you? No, I did not get hurt. Uh, okay, good, 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 good. What was it like meeting so many people there that, you know, you're friends with them on Facebook or maybe they're listeners or watchers of your show, but you've never met them in person. What was that like? It was it was actually pretty fun meeting them, uh, meeting everyone because usually, like you know, I'm over here just looking at a, like a little camera. You don't know really how many people are watching from the other side besides numbers and statistics. But when you go out to events and you have all these people walk up to you like, "Hey, Maddie, I watched your show." It's like quite interesting because then you know, hey, people actually like me. That was mm-hmm. surprise. <laughs> well, I don't know how surprising it is, but um, yeah, it, it is really nice. <laughs> yeah. So, what was your favorite experience from that from that whole trip altogether? From that trip altogether, um, it's hard to say because there was a lot of fun experiences. It had to be. I was doing a pre-recorded live show with KG and Ringy during the events, and what happened was in the middle of our pre-recorded stream. 
it wasn't like live or anything. Nathan Matthews, who the guy who was running the event, walks over to us and just starts a conversation with us. Oh, in the during... middle of us recording. <laughs> <laughs> he goes hey. he's talking about how his um daughter was like, It's dry in this van and whether or not she's getting paid. <laughs> and then like I look at the camera and I look back and he goes, Wait, are you live? He starts freaking out. <laughs> that's what they say the, that's the trouble of live tv sometimes you know it's just uh you never know what's gonna happen yeah, yeah. um are you uh planning to attend um any organized digs in 2020 um we want to go to quite a few we want to go to um pound the ground light thing is my dad just started a new um chemotherapy so we don't know what the future holds for us mm -hmm. yeah yeah Take it one day at a time. And I know there's also a big stock coming up in the fall in October, which will be right where um, the same kind of area where Pound the Ground was, too. So you'll have your opportunities to seize them. Yeah. yeah. yeah the rumor has it that you and your dad wanted to organize a New Jersey beach hunt. Do you think you think that will happen? It might. Well, the other day, my dad got in contact with the person that we wanted to use their property along the beach for the event. Turns out, they don't own the property. <laughs> <laughs> so is it is it public land, or you just have to find the right private we owner? We have to find the right person. Got it. Got it. Well, definitely keep me posted. I'm close enough. I'll, I'll take a ride down for that if I'm available. Yeah. yeah. If it actually happens, that is. Yeah. So you got, you mentioned uh, you and your dad went to England last year. Was that your first time detecting over there? Yes, that was my first time ever detecting out of country also. Because mm. I don't really get to go out of country too much. I've only been out like twice. It was, yeah, that was my first time detecting over there. How did it compare to detecting in the United States? Well, it compared because, let's just say that in Britain, traffic is, well, they talk about traffic in New York being bad, but then you talk about the entire country of the England, <laughs> and they're quite comparable in traffic size. Yeah. For me, it was um, more being a passenger on the wrong side of the road, on the wrong side of the car being terrified every time we were turning in the wrong lane, you know? It's just like, I, I couldn't get used to that. Yeah, we were driving, and the person driving us is just there, right, driving us. I was, we were in a um, car with um, DJ Dowling, and all of a sudden, there's, like, police cars driving past us. This limo goes by, and all these police cars and motorcycles and whatnot. Literally, like, two minutes later, after it was long gone, the guy goes, that was a motorcade for one of the... Um, one of the royal family. They took like, oh. pictures of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's a pretty cool experience. You don't see that that often. Yeah. If you, when you asked me how um, it was comparable to the United States, if you meant like detecting wise, um, the ground over there, it was, it was different. I don't know how to explain it though. Mm. Like, I think it might have been more mineralized than mm -hmm. over here. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's why they talk a lot about uh, doing the higher frequencies over there because the ground is so mineralized. Yeah. Hey, you mentioned earlier uh, you like to do historical research. Um, how do you identify different properties that you want to detect on? Well, one of the what I you what I did at one point was I looked at Wikipedia and I looked up Revolutionary War battle sites. And it just gives you an entire list of mm. Revolutionary War battles and where they took place. Now, we've never detected at any of those spots mm -hmm. either, due to the fact that right now they're all like national monuments right. and whatnot. Uh, yeah. Mostly, it's, me, it's mostly my dad that does like research on different places. Mm -hmm. And I, when we know, do get when we do get a good place, we just stumble upon it. Yeah, I was just going to say, so long as it's old, there's potential, right? You start swinging your coil, and you never know what you might find. Yeah. Yeah. And some of the greatest places I found it weren't the places that I actually researched, but just places I happened to drive by and say, "Hey, I wonder what that is," and then kind of look it up, and then find out there's something good there. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of research, somebody else has already did that research too. Oh, uh, yeah. one spot. The reason we got to detect it was because our, um, what's it called, my aunt, she was the head of security 
over this entire area, which means that she let us go in there and detect. It's 6,000 acres of land, wow. right? Wow. The one, it turns out that that area is full of historical stuff. The one area, there was a skirmish between the um, patriots and the um, loyalists, you know, the people that are like, we want to stay part of Britain. And, mm-hmm. and the other side of the um, property, there used to be a little village there. Then it got raided by a pirate in which he then buried somewhere on the property a treasure chest full of gold, silver, and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the kind of story that that'll treasure. Keep, I, I just yeah, that's the kind of story that'll keep me up at night and keep me going back to that field over and over again to either prove it's there or prove it's not there. Right. Yes, the thing I, is, we have until May because the company that owns the area is selling it off. Uh, so, what is Matty Tomani's strategy for getting permission? Strategy: walk up to door, knock on door, ask for permission, and get told off. <laughs> yeah, it's it's that it's that simple, right? Um, but so many people are in, too intimidated to knock on somebody's door. What would what would your advice be for those people? Just pump yourself up. Say to yourself, "Look, I got this." What's the worst that could happen? Why you walk up there and knock on a door? Yes or no? Exactly. It's not like unless you live in like the middle of nowhere in Texas. Not that they're gonna pull out like some weapon on you like get off my property (laughs) unless you annoy him so let's have a little fun here have you ever seen the movie back to the future i have but it was probably a long time ago (laughs) so basically doc brown and marty mcfly get into a delorean and they fly 30 years in the future and they found like flying cars and flying skateboards and all kinds of crazy futuristic stuff even though that never happened but recently i've read an article they're coming out with new deloreans So what if you were actually got into a DeLorean with a flux capacitor and you actually went 30 years into the future from now and they actually have flying cars and flying skateboards and all this cool stuff? What do you think metal detectors would be? What would your wildest imagination for the futuristic metal detector? Hmm, the futuristic metal detector. I could imagine it not being a metal detector, but rather a strong magnet that pulls up any kind of metal. So... You swing over the ground, and all the old artifacts just gravitate up towards it. Uh, kind of like a, a, a detecting version of Magneto, the supervillain. Yeah. Can, uh, just attract any but type. If, <laughs> but if they didn't do that, I can imagine it. Ha- be, it, like, it would be like it talks to you like some other machines in the past have, but it would be like, hey, kid, there's a musket ball in this hole. It would always be a correct. <laughs> What if it was like a 3D hologram of the item floating around in a circle right above the ground? Or it shows you like a 3D model of everything under the ground. Right. Right, exactly. Put on some gla- save us goggles. From digging a lot of, I was going to say, save, save us from digging a lot of foil and pull tabs, that's for sure. Yeah. So what, what motivated you to start your show, Digging Adventures? Hmm, what started us? What's, what motivated us? Hmm, that's a hard question. Because hmm. I, mean, I it... don't exactly remember what. Yeah, it's it. probably the fact that, that there's great metal detectorists out there that have their own shows and whatnot. And I just wanted to be up there somewhere in that big cloud of metal detecting shows. And then, you know, went off from there. Oh, so you've got a great following and very active listeners. How do you feel that your show has evolved over the time? How do I feel my show's evolved over the time? Well, at the beginning, like, you know, like the, um, like the genesis of my show, I started off in my kitchen against a wall in a chair with my kitchen table in front of me. Mm -hmm. And my dad had to hold his iPhone in front of me for an hour. (laughs) You can see how that started getting annoying. Right. Having to hold the phone up for an hour. So we bought a tripod. Mm -hmm. And then the we have started having internet problems because so many people started watching. We also changed up a little bit. We got our own little background sign, which is no longer in use. Then we moved into the living room and we set up a little table stuff. 
But, like, following-wise, I think it just gradually grew. Like, at the beginning, we had a few hundred viewers. I was surprised when I found out we had at least, like, five watching, let alone a few hundred. <laughs> and yeah. gradually over time, people more and more um, saw our show and started watching. Um, we started getting, like, pretty well-known people on our show. We got Gypsy Jules and um, what's his name, Rick Savage on there, all pretty well known, which also helped a bit with um, popularity wise. More people started watching, and then we here we are now. That, that's awesome, um, and it sounds like a great evolution that you described. Was most of it based on you and your dad saying, "All right, it's time to get a better background, and it's time to do this," or did you actually get feedback from your viewers that said, "Hey, that's a good idea. Maybe we should listen to them." It was more of like it wasn't that we wanted to upgrade, mm -hmm. and people weren't suggesting we do it. It was more of for some reason Facebook is shutting down again. Time to upgrade. <laughs> Like, the one time we couldn't get over 100 live viewers on our show at one time. So we got an entirely new internet router, a massive iPad, a 12-inch iPad for us to do this um, show on. Um, got entirely new everything. And mm. all that was in vain when, you, when Facebook decided that, you can't bring people on anymore. Uh, you, uh. Like, you can't do it face-to-face. -face. So then my dad goes back to the store and buys a $1,000 computer. <laughs> Comes home, we hook it up, and now we do the show on there, which made it better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're obviously comfortable on camera and talking in a live environment. Are you naturally that way, or do you have to work on it? Um. Well, right now, it's like sort of – like right now, I don't well, – when I first started, I don't think it was like natural. It was just whenever I start talking, I just start rambling on and on and on. <laughs> and I think that sort of like helped with it. I guess you could sort of say it was like sort of natural because I thought to myself, it's a camera screen, not mm -hmm. a person. Sometimes you were saying before, yeah, you're just looking into a tiny camera. Sometimes it's hard to make that connection that when you're talking to a couple hundred people, but you can't see them, you don't see their expressions and, and what's their feedback to you. That, that's a challenge in and of itself. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't think about that. Hmm. All right. Well, don't. Don't, don't let it mess you up. <laughs> <laughs> and after, from that day forward, the Dingo right. Patty Show was never the same. <laughs> what happened? Well, Grant told me... Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, let's talk about your YouTube channel. I, I know you have your, your live broadcasts available there for any time viewing, but you also have videos of you metal detecting. Do you find filming while detecting challenging? Um, well, it's not really hard when your dad has to come over and do the recording for you. <laughs> Well, if I had to say from my dad's perspective, it would probably be a little more challenging than usual because not only do you have to record your own stuff, but then whenever, but when your son's like 24 feet away and I'm like, oh, I got a pretty good signal over here. Mm -hmm. I have to walk over just to find out the can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say it's a bit more challenging on my dad's part. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I know, too, filming. Sometimes you, you want to just get out there and dig and find stuff. Yeah. And having to turn the camera on, set it, get a good angle. It's work. It really is work. Although sometimes I, um, my dad does equip me with my own little um, camera, in which the one time, like, I'm terrible at filming, I realized. Like, I'll be looking at the coin with my own eyes, not the camera's perspective. Right. And when I look back at the video, it's like the camera starts drifting off. And it's like, all you see is like the sand in the background. <laughs> I have to get better on that. For those who want to be a better on a camera and produce better videos, what advice would you give them? What advice would I give them? Um, well, I have two pieces of advice. One piece of advice would be just maybe think of the camera as like just a, a regular everyday Joe. Your regular everyday Joe, you know? Mm -hmm. Just think of it as a person that you're just talking to. And then just once you feel comfortable, you can just keep going on and on about what you want to talk about. I'm not good with advice. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I that's think that's good. good. I, I like the, the the interpretation of a camera as just kind of an average person. Um, 
they yeah. get kind of might humanize it a little bit more. Um, yeah. So when you're doing your show, um, you've kind of got different backgrounds all the time. Is there a theme or do you just pick something that looks cool? How, how do you decide on what background you're going to use? Well, the background, we usually do it based on who we're having on, to like represent them. For instance, when we had um, Quarter Hoarder on, he always buries his bananas in his hole. So we mm-hmm. thought, you know, it'd be interesting putting a banana background, right. which we did not do. <laughs> so it's usually just based on the person. Got it. And this is just in. XP Team USA is going to be a sponsor of your show starting in February. We're very excited about that. You know, we're going to provide you guys with a bunch of short videos that you can air um, during the show. Okay. Yeah, I am excited about that. Yeah, I think we've got a good team to, to you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, just how-to videos on different topics. And um, if you got any requests, we'll make sure we write them down and share it with everybody. Yeah, I'm really excited to have that on. It means that it'll help the people that are watching that need advice. And it also gives me a break some at some point during the show. Yeah, you need some time to take a sip of water or take a breath. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you got any future plans for your show that we may not know about? Future plans for my show. Uh, hmm. Future plans for my show. I don't know. Because right now it's working pretty well. Mm-hmm. But... If something pops up in the future, then we might have to, like, make, like, right on the dot plans. Mm-hmm. Yep. I understand I mean, besides, that. like, our future lineup for people we're having on, which we learned that the, it's not a good idea to put two months ahead, like, to post up everyone you're going to have on two months ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other reasons. But, like... And besides, like, having people ready for when they're going to be on, we have no real future plans. All right. So 2019 was a good year for you. Um, What's on your bucket list for 2020? What do you really want to find this year? Ah, a bucket list. If you want to hear my bucket list, you might as well just make an entire new video. Well, (laughs) let's see. If I was going to make a short version of it, like the things I really want, I would want a cannonball. Um, let's see, gold coin, because you know nobody has enough of those. I don't right. have any of those. I would also want a a natural British new scent. Hmm. The okay. only one I found was planted at its um hunt. Okay. Hmm. Uh, something I also want, which I'm pretty sure I won't find. I forget what year and um date is but it's a certain type of wheat penny that's like really rare it has like a certain date i mm. forget okay yeah there's a there's a couple good ones out there oh, yeah. yeah so if you ever listened to the show before i asked this question to everybody I, i'm just curious i like to get everybody's answers so if you were ever given a one-day pass to metal detect anywhere in the united states that's always been off limits to metal detecting where would you go the white house front lawn <laughs> that was my answer too. Yeah, that was mine too. That's one of the most popular answers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I can see why. Well, Maddie, thanks so much for joining us. Um, we've really enjoyed talking to you. Um, we hope um, any of your listeners who are um, listening to us enjoyed it. And um, and if you haven't checked out Maddie's show, check it out. Digging Adventures, the live show with Maddie on Facebook. He's also got a YouTube channel. Search for Digging Adventures. A lot of great content, very entertaining. I think you'll all really enjoy it. Yeah, it was a pleasure being on here. Oh, yeah, we really enjoyed having you on, and, uh, yeah, it was great, and we would love to have you back on here again sometime. Yeah, I'd have to talk to my dad about that one. Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, good luck in 2020. Um, I'm hoping to get together with you and your dad soon. I promised I'll get you guys on a good property at some point, so hopefully we'll meet up in the near future. Yeah, I'd, um, yeah I think it'd be pretty fun to um, meet up in the text. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, we'll see you. Thanks, Maddie. Right. Bye. <laughs> Hi, this is Dave D. Hi, this is Sonia. R.C. Dunn. This is Alan. Jim. We're the Minnesota Beach Boys. This is Ken Noy. This is David Kimball. This is Grant Hanson. Dean Center. Lynn Quellen. Hi, this is John. Josh Kemmel. Cameron Macer. Pete Sorrell. And we are. And we are. And we are XP Team USA. And you are listening to the Metal Detecting Podcast.
This segment is brought to you by Omega Mill Pouches, the official digging pouch of XP Team USA. If you're looking for a rugged, hunt-tested, washable pouch, look no further than Omega Mill. Get on eBay and search Omega Mill Pouches. That's O-M-E-G-A-M-I-L-L. We'd like to welcome back to the show the creator of Omega Mills Pouches. If you have ever used Omega Mill Pouch, you'll probably never use anything else. So further ado, let's welcome Steve Blankenship. How you doing, Steve? Thank you very much for having me on the show. Yeah, thanks for coming yeah, back. Yeah, thanks for coming back. Uh, I'm excited to speak with you again. Um, I've used the Relic Elite for a number of years now, and we're going to give away one um, on this podcast. So we'll give you details about that later. But before we get to that, contest we want to hear everything that you've got going on with the third generation bags for omega mill can you tell us about them well it's basically a manufacturing technique it looks a little cleaner i actually resized it you wouldn't know it by looking at it but the the biggest thing is the fabric i'm using is it's a military 500 denier fabric and i'm really pleased with this fabric so from now on the, the colors are going to be uniform it's going to look the same um month after month the same color i've had an, i had a issue issue with ordering fabric before where the color wouldn't quite match the last the last one so that's going to change now it'll be the same so this bag's new weight will not only reduce the shipping costs but also be more welcome to detectorists what was your motivation for the lighter weight material is it more for the shipping cost or the usability you know we we all want to lose weight come first of the year right, all right. <laughs> so <laughs> i just had to lose just an ounce it wasn't much and i i came in at when i got done at 14 ounces Oh, and wow. even though it's, it's a couple ounces less, I think it's actually a better product. And it, as an example, um, with Amazon, they um, I typically pay eleven dollars to ship that priority mail, and they don't they don't offer very much options as say eBay would. So going to first class, it saves me quite a bit of money. And I'm also selling to more and more distributors. They like the idea of, of being able to ship that first class as well. Oh yeah, exactly. And you know machines are getting lighter and everything else is getting lighter you gotta have a lighter pouch as well <laughs> that's right yeah so so the new fabric sounds very durable it's lightweight what color options will the pouches come in so it's going to be navy olive it's a little bit darker olive than usual which which is a good olive a coyote brown um multi-cam and also to be announced probably already is black multi-cam and of the of all the five, the black multicam seems to really stand out. Yes, I am a big fan. I seen a picture of that, and I am a big fan of that black multicam. I am definitely gonna have to get me one. <laughs> I tell you what, as soon as I took it out of the package, I go, "Oh no, I'm gonna be making a lot of these." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's gonna be pretty popular. Um, it, it's really sharp looking. And I had I also make a bag for a, I have a Jeep Cherokee XJ, and I do a bag for that. So I, I had to do that for my, my Jeep, and it, it really stands out nice. Oh, yeah. So which models comes with the belts, and which ones do not? Okay, um, the Relic Elite will all have belts, but I, I did a, a beltless one as well, which I had before, but this one's going to be nicer. Instead of a 3-inch web in the back, it's going to have a 4-inch web. A lot of people have been wanting to know about some 3.5-inch belt that they use, some crazy belts I never even heard of. But with the new one, that should work a lot better. And I, I also attached that with Kevlar thread in the back, so it's not going to come out. Yeah, that sounds pretty great and um, pretty versatile, depending on the different types of belts you have. And I know people have their preferences, whether they want to put it on an existing belt or just have the, the belt attached. So it's great that you've got variety. Yeah, yeah. so the beltless one will probably be um, olive and maybe another color. So we'll see how it goes. So I know a lot of people are going to be wondering this, including myself. So when are the third generation models going to be available? Oh, I'm starting to get that out now. Oh, that's great. And are you going to roll them out in different colors as you go along? Or are they all going to be available at once? Yeah, well, today the Navy came out. Tomorrow the Coyote is going to come out. I'm going to order um, a roll of the Olive, and probably later this week they'll be out. And the Multicam will be the last two, and the regular Multicam will be the last one. Awesome. All right. Well, I think we've uh, whetted everybody's appetite about the Omega, Omega Mill bags right now. So um, let's give details about the giveaway that you're sponsoring for us. And, and thanks so much for, for helping us out there. 
Um, sure. We're going to be giving away. Yeah, we're going to be giving away a brand new Relic Elite camo bag, um, and it's super easy to enter. Um, for anyone who's listening to our podcast right now, head over to our YouTube channel. We also broadcast from YouTube, so subscribe to our XP Team USA channel, um, like the episode of this podcast, and leave a comment. Pretty simple, straightforward. That's it. That's right. As he said, we broadcast on YouTube, and we've got the link to the show description. So if you're not listening on there now, be sure to stop by after the show to enter. If you're listening to this on Spreaker or whichever, just jump on there on YouTube channel and just give it a like and comment on there and uh, help us support the show a little bit. And you'll be entered to win the brand new Omega Mill giveaway pouch which is going to be the black camouflage and somebody's going to get a really nice pouch all right yeah cool. it's going to be pretty pretty sweet hey, yeah St- um steve where can we go where can everybody go to find your pouches and find what they look like well amazon and ebay and on down the road i i'm not going to announce it yet but it looks like i'm going to have another option for people to buy my products which is going to be pretty good all right awesome i mean between amazon and ebay um that's pretty easy for most people so um, if you don't win this black camo bag, um, head on over to Amazon, head over to eBay, search Omega Mill, and um, you'll find the pouch that's right for you. All right. Yeah. Can't wait to see the pouches. I can't wait to get one myself. <laughs> Hope to have you back again sometime, and next time you have some more pouches or anything else new, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd love to have you back on. For sure. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Really appreciate it. We'll see you. Okay, thank you, guys. This is Michael from XP Metal Detectors Americas. Be sure to check out the new XP ORX Metal Detector, model starting at $649. All right, welcome back. And that was Steve Blankenship. Great guy to talk to. Yeah, I really enjoy uh, talking to Steve. I've been using his pouches at Omega Mill for, for a number of years now. And I'm really excited about this black camo one that he's coming out with. Yeah, it sounds very cool. I saw a picture of it and I I'm in love I love that thing. It looks really cool. I'm going to definitely have to get one. Yeah, and, you know, somebody listening right now is a chance uh, to win it. You know, just make sure you're listening on our YouTube channel. So if you're on Spreak hop over to the XP Team USA um, YouTube channel and search for this podcast. It'll be live right away. We'll have a link to it right in our description. Um, Leave a comment there, like the video, and make sure you're subscribed to our channel. And uh, that's how you enter. That's right. All you got to do is easy as that. Even if you're listening to us on Spreaker, all you got to do is go back to the YouTube channel, check it out on YouTube, and give it a like. Make sure you subscribe and comment, and you are entered to win the black camo omega mills relic elite pouch the new one with a newer material the lightweight all that good stuff yeah it's gonna be pretty pretty cool and uh we're going to announce the winner on our next show which will be february 7th all right yeah and it was great talking to maddie tomaney also yeah always nice talking to um somebody who's so passionate about the hobby and even at 14 he's been detecting a lot longer than a lot of people I know who are in this hobby. So he's he's kind of a seasoned veteran already. Yes, he might, he mentioned starting at seven years old. Yep, wow. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's great found. that he keeps going. And uh, like I said to him, uh, hopefully he and I and his dad will get out detecting together soon. Yeah, be watching their show also because, like we said, XP Team USA will be sponsoring the Maddie Show, the Maddie Digging Live Show, and we will also have videos of tips and tricks and everything that you can learn metal detecting and it is very insightful to watch. Yeah, we're all doing these videos. They're short, you know, only about a minute and a half, but they're good um, beginner or intermediate tips on anything from, you know, a technique to scouting land. Um, really good informative videos. All right. Well, that's all we got. And we will see y'all on February 7th. And we hope you had a great New Year's and Christmas, and we can't wait to be back. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Until next time. See you. Get that permission, put the coil to the soil, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Metal Detecting Podcast, brought to you by XP Metal Detectors. <laughs>